This is where the story splits because it's time for you to go. 5:44 a.m. on the morning of the Boston Marathon. I'm in red wave, which is wave one. Mary's in white wave, which is wave two. We have to split and get the, the school buses, the yellow buses, to the start line separately. So hopefully I'll see you there. But if not, good luck. Good luck. And now our two stories start and split. Let's do this. All right, I guess this is where it starts. We're heading to the bag drop right now. It's uh, 6.06 a.m. I'm hopefully gonna meet a few people that I can hang with because I feel lonely without Mary. Athletes Village now, uh, just waiting for Mary, obviously uh, I thought we weren't going to be able to see each other uh, but uh, I think she's going to be able to get here and meet us which is pretty cool but it's just now hanging around for like an hour and a half maybe going into the coral, uh, cor coral? corral just to, um, I don't know how early you do that but that's the next step. Corral 5 heading there now. Um, oh, maybe the quarter potties first. Hey, I'm enjoying the Oh, no, wait, well, there, there you go. Little. Oh, as well, they're incredible. Oh, thanks. Well, there you go. Subscriber gate to 100,000. It was all starting to get real now, walking to the start line. And what I didn't realize was that it's probably a kilometre to get to that line. But as you can see, it was a nice day, so it made for a pretty lovely walk. I was trying to run diagnostics on my body as I went, trying to feel how it might go, but ultimately, I was stepping into the unknown. I'd been really ill in the lead up, suffering with jet lag and end of term fatigue, and the key was going to be, can I fight these mental battles and let the legs just run? But it's really tough. But here's the thing I have to remember. I've put five months of training into this and I'm here walking towards the Boston Marathon start line. Ultimately, I'm hugely privileged to get to experience this. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, then consider helping us get to 100K before my birthday by just tapping that button. Then I can go back to my normal no hard sell policy, but it would be hugely appreciated. Okay, it's about time to get this thing started. Started yet? We're just running to the start line. I think. I think that's the start. Five k in, and the plan was four-minute kilometer average every five k. So I'm not looking at my kilometer splits. I'm looking at my 20, I'm looking at my 5k splits. You would not believe it. Literally 20 0, 0 And that's up and down. So, so far so good. Although my heart rate is a bit higher than I would like it right now, but we'll see what happens. Just went through 10k, pretty much uh, 39.51, so nine seconds on the target. Um, and you know what? The legs feel bad, heart rate feels high. We're gonna try and gut it out and see if the legs come back in a bit. Um, but it's not feeling good, I'm afraid. Pretty much bang on pace then. So 15k in uh, in one hour, literally almost to the second. 
I'd say 1000002, but just holding on um, and hoping for the best, really. it really hard to film now just doesn't feel good but did go through the half in 124 still but um we've got the hills to come i'm really suffering i don't want this to be like a suffer fest video but the legs just never really showed up today um so it is what it is I'm gonna try and enjoy boston instead the first hill this is it the first marathon I've ever walked in. I like, I didn't get a heartbreak wrong, but the day was just too hard today. My legs are absolutely screwed. Like, we're not there from the get go. It's been, hang on. It's been absolutely torrid from the start, just a mental battle. And in the end, my heart rate was just way too high, just way too high. Could not sustain. So I've had to take like a one minute breather and then I'll get going again. I have absolutely blown up. So just finishing now. Just trying to finish. There's no words for that. I thought New York was hard. And that was just another level. I squeezed sub three, which would be my C goal. A goal was like in the 240s, B goal, PB, C goal, sub three. So I got there, but my God, that was a battle. I feel really not great. I need Gatorade. And now begins what we call the zombie march. Where everyone, yeah, look. It's like Shaun of the Dead. Look what I found! I did film inside the medical tent, but that's a whole lot of Yeah, Mary, I just had to go and find Mary in the medical tent because she cramped up. But now, we're back together. It's the first time we've seen each other since 6am. Hello. Well done. Well done. Oh my god. Show your medal. That hug was motivating me when it was so tough. That's all yeah. I wanted. Right, now we're going to go and get a milkshake, chips and a burger. And as I sipped on my milkshake, my mind went back. Firstly to the race. What I couldn't capture was how utterly my legs were trashed whilst I was charging down Boylston to squeeze under the three hour mark. But then I went back further. You see, the marathon is usually the culmination of many, many months of hard work. Months of early mornings and long runs, of discipline and commitment beyond the normal. It's months of fatigue, it's months of pain, of adapting, of learning. It's months of doubt and worries and planning and replanning. It's so many months of sheer hard work. And there is zero guarantee that all of that hard work will come good on the day. Of course, you skew the odds in your favor, but the marathon gods may have other plans. That is what is so utterly addictive about the marathon. It is the ultimate test of running faith all this work and no guarantee of success. But we remember, the race is just the cherry on top. Look at the person we're creating on the journey. 
and as I reflect, I think this may actually be my proudest achievement in my slowest marathon. Because when the wheels came off and I started to lose hope, something deep inside stirred and dragged me around that course, forced me to finish. I have a clear, possibly life-defining memory of turning onto Boylston and thinking, what do I want here? Sub three at Boston and the possibility of sub three at all of the majors or the regret of not trying. So I emptied the tank, beyond what I thought was possible. Ultimately, the time was irrelevant. In that moment, I summoned something I am very proud of. The courage to try even when I felt as awful as I did. If I didn't make it, I still know I gave everything. And that is why this is perhaps my proudest marathon achievement ever. The sub three dream is alive, just. On to Chicago in October.